Welcome back to yet another three days of breaking news updates. Days five and six are much more chill when it comes to the lore stuff than what we got from Hell's Island and its surrounding days, but there is still a bit I can talk about, especially with the old but new heist that is No Mercy. If you missed the previous video, I highly recommend going back and watching it. Day 5's report is similar to that of Day 3's, but the Pyramid of Giza shared a similar fate as the Dream Temple. Word now comes in of a similar occurrence deep underground beneath the Great Pyramid of Cheops in Giza, Egypt. The suspected detonation was followed by a thunderstorm which seemed to appear out of nowhere, with unconfirmed reports of lightning striking the top of the pyramid several times. No casualties have been reported, but a large portion of the pyramid has collapsed. The entire area is under quarantine while Egyptian authorities investigate. Some kind of explosion occurring deep below the pyramid causing massive damage to the structure that would give even Flex Tape a run for its money. That's a lot of damage! What's going on at the pyramids is a bit strange, but it seems to be the doing of the dentist. Rachel reports that Hellman was listed as a passenger to Egypt, and on day 7 has a note saying Hellman was denied travel to Iraq four days ago. Iraq is where the Great Ziggurat of Aur is. Let me play a few of the new safe house lines that I didn't mention yesterday. Four sites of power, but only three kings. Maybe that's where Lindenhurst came in. The Aztec, Sumerian, and Egyptian mythologies are all represented. But what about the fourth? Why these four monuments? And who or what are the giants we keep seeing referenced? To those who are worthy, the giants grant the greatest gift. There's a mention of an obsidian throne in Lindenhurst's journal. It does seem that these four pyramids had more significance than just helping identify the ancient writings, especially if the dentist is going around destroying them. Remember the text we deciphered on the rings from the coffers? I keep thinking of an old portent. Where the four stand, portals will be open. Duke is wondering the same thing. The texts keep mentioning portals. Portals to where? I was always thinking that it was referring to people standing in set locations, similar to First World Bank Overdrill, but perhaps it is talking about the four sites of power, the pyramids. Day 6, however, was the day that so much of the community had been waiting years for. No Mercy Hospital. It was implemented a little different than how I had imagined. Whilst Bane is still infected with the virus the dentist injected into him, we are not actually visiting Mercy Hospital in hopes of finding a cure. Instead, the heist is classified as a flashback. This means that our No Mercy job back from 2012 is canon. The reason is fleshed out a bit more, however, to fit with our current situation, of course. A third party is wanting two vials of the virus and is exchanging it to Bane for a book. Not just any book, though. The Guide of Cagliostro. Yes, the PDF file that players received if they pre-ordered the game. Don't worry, it has no real importance apart from being the exciting incident for Bane to start looking into Baldwin's secrets. The two vials seem to have somehow landed into the dentist's glowing gaze. We can assume that one was used on Bane in the present day. The fate of the second vial has me more concerned. In No Mercy, Bane is still narrating, and in the intro dialogue in the elevator, you can get Duke voice lines, which may confuse a lot of people since we know Duke only joined the team sometime after Brooklyn 1010. However, when Wordsmith first introduced himself, he explained his take on the canon of Payday, saying, I view the heist with the idea of them being anecdotes, legendary tales as told by the people involved long after they've actually happened. With each telling of a story, something always changes or gets embellished. No one ever remembers things exactly the same way. Since the heist is a flashback, we assume this is a retelling of the story. In one of the openings, Duke even mentions, Why does it feel like I shouldn't be here right now? With Chains replying, implying that Chains is the one telling the story. He also narrates the pre-contract dialogue, which helps support this notion. Regardless, 
No Mercy is still a fantastic map, and the remake is extremely true to its original counterpart. It maintains the pseudo stealth exactly the same way, and the assault intensity in the tight hallways feels exactly the same. Except now, we have Payday 2 skills, and it is genuinely easier in my opinion. So going through the events, we break into the ICU room where our virus-stricken friend is and steal a fuck ton of his blood. There is a small change with him though, the tattoo on his neck. It is actually an Aztec god. Mitchtantikutli... Uh. Basically, he was the god of the dead and ruled part of the underworld and sometimes involved in ritual cannibalism. So there is your zombie reference. However, unlike in Payday the Heist, where it is the green flu and we caused the events of Left 4 Dead, the breaking news site reveals that there was a huge fire that caused the building to collapse, and it was never rebuilt. This is important for a number of reasons. It means that we will not be revisiting Mercy Hospital, since we can't. And secondly, that we don't have a cure for Bane yet. After you complete the No Mercy mission, you do get a trophy of the Guide of Cagliostro in the safe house. You can't pick it up, however, the diamond can now be grabbed and if you take it over to the book, it bursts into flames, burning the entire thing, leaving only the word Guide visible but glowing. So all of these things beg the question, if Bane only has days to live, why the bloody heck are we possibly going to the Capitol building? I know that some of you pointed out that the icon doesn't look like the White House, but forgive me for being an ignorant Australian. A few extra lines of dialogue were added. Both Hoxton and Chains make remarks about the president. Chains is being the most interesting. Looks like the dentist corrupted the top of the food chain. Always knew there was something fucked up about the president. That is huge. We know the Kataro had emails sent to the Oval Office, but this could very much imply that the dentist is in control of the president. We know that he has access to the Rose Room, where the White House Secretary gives press briefings. We know as much from one of Rachel Riggs' audio recordings. White House press briefing was useless, more lies and double talk from Salters, but what was Dr. Hellman doing there? In the Day 7 news report, there has been radiation detected in Washington, and the President has ordered all key staff to evacuate the White House and board Air Force One. And in one of the audio recordings, Rachel mentions that the dentist was meeting with the President right before boarding Air Force One. Alan, what the hell is going on here? Why is my dentist answering Congressman Simmons' phone? And why did he send me to a bakery run by a Ukrainian mobster with connections to the Payday Gang? And what the hell was he doing meeting with the president right before he left on Air Force One? I need resources on this one, Alan. My gut says it goes deep. This gives us the perfect chance to launch an offensive on the White House. I did think that this could have been a loud only heist, but given the circumstances, it might be possible to stealth it. So the question still remains, how are we gonna save Bane? I don't think it's likely, but they could actually kill him off for good. After all, Hox does have this depressing line. Losing the boss. One of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with, eh? Another thing worth mentioning is that with each new heist that was released, we got eight difficulty achievements and three extra ones related to the heist. Taking that formula and looking at the upcoming heist, we still have 10 achievements unaccounted for. And if you watched to the end of my last video, you might have noticed the language sheet. That was a little gift to me. I had asked Wordsmith for a high resolution copy since most of the details were getting lost in the diesel engine. But he gave me the full character sheet. Even the few characters we had still not encountered, I fear that whatever is in store for day eight it's gonna be a monster. And you should try to catch the live stream over when the content drops. I just updated my tier one emote to be this awesome thing. A follow is greatly appreciated and you guys subscribing over here really means a lot to me. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos to make them as entertaining and as stylish as possible. Thanks guys, Bye bye
What's next? We're gonna go chasing bloody angels and demons around DC?